Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Archeria Synclavir V tutorial series. Today we're going to have a look at a couple of subjects. We're going to study the concept of modulators. I've talked about the fact that this synth is fundamentally an FM synth several times in this series without really describing what frequency modulation is, so we're going to have a look at that. We're also going to jump over to the envelope page and have a look at envelopes, figure out how they work. Hope you're enjoying the series so far. Check out the Patreon and channel member links below if you'd like to help support my channel and carry on making content such as this. And so let's make a start. The first thing that I'm going to do today is come briefly out of the screen menu. I'm in the simple sign preset here. I'm going to turn it up to 24 bits resolution. At 8 bits, when we start playing with the modulators, you can very quickly um, introduce quite significant noise. I'll do it very briefly to demonstrate what I'm talking about and then almost immediately take it away. So I'm introducing frequency modulation now. A very significant noise floor gets introduced very quickly. If I increase this to 24 bits, watch this noise disappear. There we go. Sacrificing a little bit of integrity to the original instrument just to help make the demonstration a little bit smoother. Turn frequency modulation all the way back down to zero and jump over to the engine page. So here's the concept. We have our carrier generating a sine wave at 130.7 hertz. Let's call it 130. We also have a modulator wave generating a sine wave at 130 hertz, but you can't hear that. In fact, you can never hear the modulator in the Synclavier. In some synthesizers, you can hear directly hear the, at the output of the modulator. That's not the case here. It only does anything when we introduce it via the mixer. So by increasing the FM mod value, which is effectively the modulation depth, we're allowing this wave to perform work on this wave. And we very quickly get a pretty dramatic tonal um, effect that we've already seen. Now at audio rates, these waves are cycling at 130 Hertz. It's really difficult to actually tell what's going on, but the modulator is purely a sine wave. There's nothing complicated about it at all. Now, because we can't hear it directly, it's a little bit difficult to prove that, but I'm going to do a demonstration to kind of do it in a roundabout way. What I'm going to do is turn the FM ratio down to almost zero. I'm going to turn the main FM ratio down to zero and the fine ratio up to 0.01. What this means is that the modulator is almost cycling at zero, it's cycling very slowly indeed now, effectively one thousandth of the frequency of the key that I press. So what impact is that going to have on the carrier when I press a key? Well, let's have a listen and watch the tuner very carefully. Here we go. The tuner going down to about 129 and then coming up to about 132. That's the modulator over the period of what maybe seven seconds very slowly decreasing the pitch of the carrier and then increasing the pitch again so that's the modulator sine wave modulating the pitch of the carrier wave it's all about frequency or pitch modulation the amount of modulation that it's allowed to perform is primarily controlled with the fm mod knob so we had a range of about 128 up to 132 then if I increase the FM mod value, that range is going to increase. And now the maximum and minimum extents of this pitch range have just gone still down 128. Let's turn it all the way up. 134 down to 127.2. Now at these very slow speeds, frequency modulation synths, FM synths are not supposed to operate at this rate. They're supposed to operate at audio rates and you get some kind of unusual quirks. As I start to increase the ratio knob, you're going to see the, the kind of the maximum and minimum uh, range of this pitch change vary. So if I start increasing the fine control now, I'm right clicking on this knob to make very small adjustments. And now you can hear and quite clearly, well hear and see the maximum and minimum pitch values changing really dramatically. Just to clarify, this is a fine control here of seven one thousandths of the ratio of the current of the pitch that I'm playing. So we're still making absolutely minute changes. The reason I mention this is because if you put um, FM synths in effectively kind of fixed frequency mode, as we've done here, we've kind of 
abandoned the concept of audio rate um, frequency modulation and now we're operating in cycles that are identifiable to our ears you're going to get this curious artifact where the pitch range the maximum and minimum pitch range um, is, is visibly different as we increase try not to get too carried away with that it's just an unusual artifact of how frequency modulation works what i want to do now is pretty quickly get back up to the stage where the modulator is operating the audio rates so now i'm going to start left clicking on the fine control knob and the, th the interesting thing to watch now is the spectrum analyzer. Watch the interaction of the modulator with the carrier. It's really complex. There's an awful lot of science going on here because you've got these two modulators operating at fundamentally different frequencies. At the moment, they are not kind of consistent or synchronous at all. And this modulator, this kind of random sine wave modulator that's now cycling at well one tenth of the original pitch of the uh, of the note that I'm playing is now past the point of our ears to recognize those individual pitch changes. So I'm just going to step up to the next notch, which is 0 0.1 on the master control, and we can start going up through the fine control again. We're introducing all of these n harmonic frequencies up to 0 0.2. Double click on the fine knob. That have no mathematical relationship with the with the fundamental. And I'll stop going up in thousands. Now I'm going to right click on the FM ratio knob. The next interesting thing happens when we have a ratio of one. So the modulator is now operating kind of where it wants to be. It's operating at 130 hertz, sympathetic with the key that I press. And this is all locked into ratios. So now from this point onwards, we can draw some kind of direct mathematical correlation between the modulator and the carrier. They're both cycling at the same speed. So 130 times a second, the modulator is compressing and rarefacting the carrier wave way beyond our ability to actually identify any of this stuff. Now, when we push past one, you'll see the modulator start to generating, generate its own sine waves in the spectrum analyzer. Here we go. I'll turn it down a little bit because it's not the most pleasant sound. You watch the fundamental, which is at 130 hertz, you're starting to see this second sine wave separate itself out. Step up another point one and carry on from here. And this wave here is the frequency of the modulator. Think about what pitch is. We can hear pitch. We can hear any kind of stable and consistent variation of frequency over time. If you oscillate a sine wave at 130 times a second, you're going to interpret that as middle C. Now we've got this second wave, this modulator, interacting with that carrier wave in a fundamental way. It never fully subverts it. You always hear the 130 hertz. We do have a sine wave at 130 hertz. It's this one. But you can see it getting quieter and quieter and quieter with all of that destructive interference from the modulator. The modulator's doing its thing at whatever uh, frequency it happens to be, about 170. So 170 times a second, this modulator is cycling backwards and forwards. And we're hearing that interaction. And bear in mind, this is just two sine waves. All we've done so far is introduce a single harmonic on the modulator. So let's pick up the story from that side of the, the fence now on the engine side. I'll leave it in this kind of complex and harmonic tone where there's no particular kind of relationship between the two and um, the two operators. And now I'm going to start introducing new harmonics into the modulator. You'll see new frequencies appear in the spectrum analyzer. Okay, randomly I had partial nine selected and nothing was happening. Here's partial one. And exactly the same story is told from the phase perspective as well. Shifting the phase of all of these harmonics is going to generate yet more constructive and destructive interference. All of this is dialing into a wave shape that the modulator is going to perform its thing periodically on the carrier.
So that's kind of mind blowing. 170 times a second, the modulator is doing this. It's increasing and decreasing the frequency of the carrier wave by an amount. These peaks and troughs represent kind of a potential amount of modulation that the modulator can apply. The depth of that modulation is controlled by the FM mod knob. So if I pull that all the way back down to zero, back down to a sine wave. And now if I introduce the frequency modulation back in very gently, I'll right click the tiniest amount of frequency modulation is interfering with the wave in this dramatic way. And very often as you browse through presets in the single via you'll very often find very low frequency modulation values set. I'll show you an example of that a little bit later um, but you really don't need to dial too much of this stuff in. It is an extremely potent like a very powerful spice you know used with caution. For the rest of today, we're going to take a slightly different approach. I think we've listened to enough enharmonic complexity. Listen, listen to a sound that actually sounds nice. I've dialed up the FM Wanda preset. It's in the lead folder, and it sounds like this. Pretty awesome sound. We're going to deconstruct how the uh, how the modulator and envelope settings work for this uh, for this preset. We're going to do it partial by partial. I'm going to start off with partial number one. Let's have a quick look in the engine page first. So we have the, the main carrier, the little bit of second harmonic. The easiest way to identify what a harmonic is doing to the sound is to put it to minimum and maximum extent. It's really simple. Okay, we've stepped away from the simple sine wave modulator. We have the, the third harmonic introduced as well. Bit of extra brightness, it's kind of accentuating the fact. Now over in the mixer, there's quite a lot of craziness going on uh, with this partial. Let's ignore the tuning and transpose options for just for the moment, that they are a bit wild. Frequency modulation dialed in quite high, FM ratio at 10.7. So the modulator for this particular partial is cycling at what, maybe 1500 hertz if I'm pressing a C at 130 hertz, 10.7 times faster than the carrier. So 1,500 times a second, the modulator is doing something, it's doing this to the carrier, and it's doing quite a lot of it because the modulation has turned up quite high. What happens if we turn the modulation all the way down? I am pressing the key, believe me. The carrier's inaudible, it's basically a thud. See the octaves setting is set to 55 hertz. So this basically this carrier has been stepped through all of the different octave settings. You can have different octave based offsets for all of the different partials. You have to turn this partial quite high to hear it at all. There it is. Basically what this octave setting is doing is taking the key that I'm pressing, 130 hertz, basically dropping it by three octaves. As you can see in the oscilloscope, it's cycling so slowly, it's inaudible. It's getting all of its tone from the modulator because it's cycling at 1500 times a second. So basically we've got this really simple kind of basic profile. The harmonic profile of the carrier is still there. It's real. Just because it's cycling very slowly doesn't mean to say it loses integrity. The synthesizer still knows what it, what it looks like. The FM modulator then comes along and 1500 times a second, it's performing modulation to that sound. Now this is quite a common effect in frequency modulation. The carrier itself is inaudible and the frequency modulation that's applied over the top of it is the thing that makes the sound. And what this means is that you don't have that persistent carrier. Ordinarily with FM synthesis, you'll hear the carrier because it always kind of pokes through. But if you take the carrier completely out of the way, then you hand entirely responsibility for generating the pitch to the modulator. It's a really kind of great trick to, to subvert or hide the carrier if you want it to disappear completely. So now when we reintroduce frequency modulation, we zoom in around 130 hertz. There is no discernible 
whoops, that was after touch. There's no discernible fundamental where we would expect to find one that's completely missing. Let's jump over to the envelope page now and have a look at it from that perspective. Okay, what we're most interested uh, in, in, in this particular sound is the harmonic envelope. So what we've got down here is basically an envelope which is it's describing a shape, a, a, a kind of a modulation amount that's going to be applied over time to the frequency modulator. The harmonic envelope is acting on the, on the modulator. And the best way to visualize it is to consider the height of the envelope to be the modulation depth. So what we're effectively getting here is we're starting out at whatever the maximum modulation amount is set by the mixer, this whatever it was, I've changed it since the, the preset got loaded, but we're gonna settle down at a lower level than that. If I manually increase this sustain point now that we've stuck on the sustain point, that's effectively identical. I'll just let it settle down again. doing this kind of business. Now I would need to turn up the frequency modulation and a little bit of the envelope. The combination of these two things are giving me that stable FM mod depth. So this gives you a wonderful kind of journey potential. We have an attack, which is actually very slow, very, very small at the moment. So I'm now increasing my attack value in this little box down below. And now we have two different directions in which to take our modulation. We've also got a release cycle. I want to make the release a little bit longer for both the modulator and I'll also make the main sound extend its release. So this is the modulation journey. And then when I let the key go, the sound's going to fade away. It's fading away a little bit fast there, isn't it? There we go. Just going to throw that preset away and get back to my basic FM Wonder sound. This time I'm going to jump over to partial two. We'll start off over on the mixer, solo the sound. That's the sound on its own. Again, turn the mod down. Basic sound this time is an identifiable C. Still cycling at 64 hertz because the octaves have been set such that it's lower than the key that I'm playing. And then we actually recovered 12 of that by, uh, by transposing up, up an octave. I'm not sure why you would want to do that. Let's bring the modulation back in. So this time the frequency modulation is operating at a multiple of two, which means the modulator is cycling twice as fast as the carrier. In other words, it's harmonious. So this time, Frequency modulator is in sympathy with the carrier. Every key that I press, the modulator is always going to be within the context of a single cycle of the, the, the carrier's waveform. Over on the envelope page, a very similar kind of sustained journey to partial one. Now, in that context, let's have a look at partials one and two together and unsolo both of them. There's the enharmonic nature of partial one coming back in again. You can see the two harmonic envelopes traveling more or less at the same speed. If I want to make that decay period longer for both of those envelopes simultaneously, I don't have to edit the envelopes themselves. I can do it from global offsets. These offsets are what are represented in the, in the main interface. Remember when we had a look at the, the primary interface, we have these envelope offsets uh, at the top. Let's make the decay of the harmonic envelope a little bit longer. 0.8. And now you can see all of these harmonic envelopes taking longer to evolve. We introduce a little bit of attack as well. Let's have a fade in for the sound as well. Let's increase the amp offset attack. Looks like there's zero 
attack, but there isn't. Obviously, we've got these tiny fractional amounts on all of these partials. It's allowing me to increase the global offset and have an effect on them all. And when we have a look over on the primary interface, these are the, uh, the end offsets that I'm changing. There's my big attack that I've just dialed in. Throw all those changes away, get back to the sound again. Partial 3 is an interesting one from the perspective of just how little the FM mod can be and still be dramatic. Here's partial 3. FM modulation at 0.028, it looks like it's off. And if I actually turn it off, we lose all that character. So let's have a look at how the, its modulator's working. We've now got the most com complex harmonic profiles here. Where's all that brightness coming from? FM ratio tells us the story. The modulator's cycling six times faster than the carrier. Still harmonically sym sympathetic, but very fast. I double click it to set it back to one. There's the difference between them. The best advice I can give you if you want to kind of crack the nuts of frequency modulation is just to dive in. Play with the FM modern ratio knobs on presets that you have dialed up. This FM Wonder is a great test bed because these three partials have got so many different characteristics to them. There's nothing like going through the range of values for each of these controls and hearing what impact it has on the sound. Bear in mind the dramatic effect that integer versus non-integer ratios have uh, for the modulator value. That's a really significant thing. Is the carrier audible? Is the frequency modulator the only thing that you're hearing? There's an awful lot to wrap your head around, but fundamentally, it's just a great sand pit, a really flexible and powerful way to generate just massively variant sounds really, really easily. That'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.